Okay, speedster's good. Got the half link in, adjusted the shift cable. Besides the huge up and down hop on the back wheel, we're gonna go take a bike ride and do some trailing. Uh, yeah, I had this other bike that I usually use and I'll put that on the stand and show you what happened to it because you uh, shouldn't be jumping Schwinn Varsities and Continentals. <laughs> But Schwinn Speedsters, yeah, you can jump those. Okay, so, yeah, we got this on. It looks pretty good. Uh, this distance is good. I mean, it's not great. This distance is okay. Could use a little aluminum spacer in between there. I think I'm going to skip it, though. I've done enough modifying to this already. Uh, shift's pretty good. For second. Oops. First. Second. Third, uh, I put the little protector on the end of the cable because I was tired of poking my hand. It's good to use these. These are, you know, if you poke yourself in the finger when you're lifting your bike or doing something to it, you know, these are nice to have. I've heard of people poking themselves in the eye. I, I don't I have no idea how they got their face that close to a brake or a shifter, but I've heard of people doing that. Mm. Hey, you know, safety's good. Okay, so, yeah, it's missing the back reflector. Let's get this off the stand and uh, put this other one on. Uh, my bike of choice when off-roading is actually a 70s Continental, but you'll see that in a second. Let's get this off the stand. Okay, we're done with this one. I forget the exact year. I think this is a 73 or 72 or something. It's somewhere around there. Let's get it on the stand and uh, I'll show you what's going on with it, what I did to it. Okay, so this is a 70 Schwinn Continental with an extremely faded burnt yellow seat. Uh, yellow new old stock grips, a yellow emblem, and off-road tires and aluminum wheels, which are 27 by inch and a quarter. Yes, it's not the preferred actual mountain bike that you would use. Uh, last season, I was using it, and this is one of my favorite bikes to go off-roading on, actually. It's tall. I get the leg extension. It's got an Italian water bottle holder. It's a Schwinn. It's got really good brakes. And what I've done is I've converted it to two-speed. You can see this derailleur doesn't have a cable to it, and it's only hooked up on this rear. The only shifting you have is right here. Okay, so you're in low, and now you're in high. Oops. And that's it. That's all you got. That stays right there. That never moves. Okay, so you got low and you got high. This is high. And... There's low. Easy peasy. Nothing to break. That derailleur is just a chain tensioner. Uh, and this is a machined piece. I machined with a little set screw to hold that where I want it. But I was doing some jumps last season and I broke a spoke. I was going to use this today because I really like it. But uh, yeah, as so you can see, the wheel is doing a little wumpy wump right there. And if you feel around here, Oh, there it is. Yeah. It's on a side you could easily change. Yeah, I did break it. There it is. Uh, it's on the non-free wheel side, so it's not a big deal. But, yeah, I'll just change it later. We're going to use this bike today. We're going to use this bike. And wifey's going to use her vintage mongoose. <laughs> and I mean vintage. <laughs> You don't see them like this anymore. <laughs> you know, I'm all about vintage here. It does have double water bottle cages. Okay, so uh, yeah, I'll fix the... I'll give you an update on the Schwinn Continental later. This is actually one of my favorite bikes to go off-roading on, believe it or not. It's nice and tall. Okay, well, that's the update. Have a good day.